Hey guys, it's Ray Nines from The Giggy Musician, and um, I've had a lot of people asking me lately about uh, what we use um, to run backing tracks for our show. Um, so we, we use a combination of backing tracks. We're basically, um, you know, guitar, bass, drums are, are live, and then we have a vocalist, and then we also do, um, you know, backing tracks to kind of enhance uh, the sound. So, um... What we use is a product called Ableton Live. It's been around for quite a number of years. Uh, I'm sure probably most of you have heard about Ableton Live. Um, and it's primarily, I think, built for, you know, looping kind of music, that kind of thing. And uh, we, of course, don't really use it for that at all. We use it to run um, our backing tracks. So when you look at this, you've got kind of, um, it looks like kind of a spreadsheet kind of view where you've got, you know, um, columns across the top and then rows going down. And so each row represents a song in our set, or in our show. So we have a set A here. There, no, there's nothing going to be fired here. This is just a, a label. The next, very next uh, row, though, is a song. And each one of these represent a song. And I can actually color code these. These are all kind of jumbled up in color right now. Let me uh, just select all of those, and I'll right-click, and I'll just color them all so they're the same. So then you can quickly tell, okay, that's set A, and then I'll do the same thing for set B. I'll just choose a different color for that. I'm not sure why this is all jumbled around in colors. Maybe our drummer was messing around with this. That sounds right. Brian, quit messing around with the colors. All right, so, so each one of these fires off a song. And you can see here I've got the title of the song, and then I've got, um, you know, the tempo, 116, and the BPM. And I've got this for every song. And if you put the tempo in here, then Ableton Live will actually play that song with that tempo in mind. And I'll show you in a, in a minute here while, why that is important. And it'll even take like um, sub-tempos. So like this one is 74.21 and this one is 126.98. So when I fire off that song, you'll see that the tempo changes to 126.98. And I've, I can fire off another one here and... This one is, you know, you can see it's 112. Okay. So, when you, you hear when I fire off that song, I don't know if you can quite hear it over the, the mic that I'm using, but uh, what we have is eight total clicks, and then it goes into the song. And so we use eight clicks at the beginning of every song. The first four clicks are a warning to us that the song is about to start. And then the four clicks is, you know, Brian, our drummer, will count in the one, two, three, four, and that gives us our, our count in. So we, we use that because the first four clicks can t kind of be, give an indication to the singer that, hey, we're about to get into the song, wrap up whatever you're talking about, or it can give an indication to the rest of the players that, hey, the, the song is coming on, so if you're on a pedal or you're tuning a guitar or whatever, you know, finish it up and, and you know, get ready because we're about to get the count in. Um, and we can do that because we're all on in-ear monitors, so we can all hear that click. You know, some of us have it louder in our monitors, you know, some of us have it kind of lower, but everybody can hear that first starting click at least. All right, so this is every song, you know, in the set list. You fire it off just by hitting play, or if the song is highlighted, you can hit enter, enter on your keyboard. And then notice it cues up the next song, so if I hit enter, it goes to the next song. So once the song you're on is finished, then you can hit enter and the very next song will start off. The other thing you could do is um, you can actually tie each one of these um, songs to a trigger on an external controller. Like we were using this little controller by Novation that had 64 pads on it. We just assigned every song we would assign to an individual button so you could fire them in any order. and and it was a little easier to hit sometimes than trying to, you know, hit the enter button. Um, okay, so that's the rows going down. And all these songs can be, you know, rearranged. I can take this one and drag it up here real quick. I can drag up something from set B and say I want to do that one in that order. So you can quickly, you know, pretty quickly and easily drag and drop these songs in, in a set list order. Okay, then... Um, we have the columns, and notice I only have two columns here. So basically, what we have is is a mono mix of all the other instrumentation that's going to play, and that's going to be panned hard 
to the right for us, and then we have the click track, which is panned hard left to, for us. Each one of these files is just a WAV file, and you put the, the WAV file in here by simply just kind of dragging and dropping it in. So I, I can, let me find another, okay. So I could take one of these WAV files, and I can just kind of drag and drop it in, just like that. Okay. And if I want to get rid of it, I can just delete it. Okay, so um, so this is just a WAV file, and you, if you look at the WAV file, you can see it's only on one side of the stereo. So I, when I bounce these tracks down, I just bounce them, you know, to you know, pan it hard right. And then the click track is just a um, a loop of a sound, and it's a wood block, and it's it's a MIDI loop, so it can easily change tempos. And it's just, you know, one, two, three, four, and it just loops indefinitely until the song is done. And this corresponds directly to the tempo that we're talking about. So when I click play on this, you can see it triggering those clicks. And it's triggering those clicks at the proper tempo, 74.21. So that's why it's really important to have that tempo correct. And then this, you know, just will just trigger um, at the proper tempo. So, and since we're using the same file over and over, we never have any problems with um, with the click level being different for every song. And that's one thing you got to try to work hard at when you're bouncing these songs down is try to get the levels about the same. Otherwise, you might have one song is a lot louder than another song. We've had problems with that in the past. Uh, we've worked to try to kind of get those to the proper level, and they're they're pretty good these days. But it took a little little while to figure that out. All right, so um, I've only got you know, like I said, one mono track and then and then a click track. But you really could, if you wanted to have like you know, break it down into individual tracks where maybe I have vocals on one track and I have this track could be uh, percussion and this track could be keyboard parts and this track could be you know, uh, I don't know whatever else. Um, some other guitar parts, or whatever, and then another track could be your click track. So you could break that up. So depending on the sound card that you're using, you know, what I did here is I just turned on the I/O options here. So I could you turn on the I/O options, and I could pick from a sound card, and I could say, okay, this one goes out to to channel one, and this one goes out to channel two, and this one goes out to channel three, and this one goes out to channel four, etc. Um, yeah, you can easily do that. So you're not limited to just having a mono. Um, you know, track for for your backup tracks. You can have you know as many as your sound card will will handle. Um, for us, we found that it was it's just been uh, more simple for us to just have it on bounce down to one mono track because we don't get the luxury of having our own sound guy a lot. We're we're dealing with different sound guys all the time. So for them to know the levels of each individual part that we might want to put on individual tracks is would be challenging at best. So what we've done is we just created a mix that works generally pretty well in you know most any environment that we go into and then we just simply tell the sound guys to to mix those tracks at about the same level as the live rhythm guitar. And if they do that then those tracks sit pretty well and um, it seems to work pretty, you know, pretty good. I mean, ideally, we'd love to have a, a sound guy that was with us all the time and that knew the songs, and we could put break out each part onto its own channel. That would be idea, ideal. But um, it really hasn't worked out that way. So you can, you know, you kind of deal with what you've got. So anyway, this is just a, an overview. There's, you know, there's certainly some more details that we could get into here on, you know, how to really make this work. You know best for you but but it's a, a good overview and let me know if you have any questions you know there's a lot of things you can do with this like you know since this is a MIDI track you could add more MIDI tracks and you could have external MIDI gear being triggered for, you know specific for each song say for instance you could have a MIDI to DMX converter that triggers light shows based on MIDI output that is associated with each individual song. So that song always gets the same light show every time you play it. Uh, there's a, a device called DMXIS, DMX I'm not sure how you pronounce it, DMXIS maybe. And that takes MIDI and converts it to, to DMX. And it's just a little USB box that you plug into your computer. 
um, and so you can easily do a, a custom light show that way. You can also do things like you could trigger a video um, using other products, and I don't think you can really do it from within Ableton the way you would want to, but there are other products that you can kind of trigger from within Ableton that would allow you to, to have a video synced up with this. So just depends on how ambitious you are. So anyway, I hope this helps out and answers some of your questions. I'm sure there's probably more questions, but you know, let me know. Again, this is Ray Nines from The Gigging Musician, and uh, hope this has helped. Uh, check out thegiggingmusician.com. All right, thanks. Bye.